guys, this next problem is really near and dear to me. And that's because it's one of the few hard level problems that I've been able to solve in a jiffy. The rest take really long. The reason behind that is because I've had other permutation problems that I've solved before. And those have given me a strong foundation. I'd recommend you check this problem out as well. It will really help you with this one. The insights you glean there will really build up over time and they'll help you solve other problems as well. Now let's have a look at this question. Permutation sequence. You're given a number n, which denotes the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up until n. There are a total of n factorial permutations. They've given an example here. Say n is 3, the permutations are 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. You're also given a number k. Assuming the permutations are in ascending order, return the kth permutation as a string. So we can see our input is n and k. n is the number of digits, that's 1, 2, 3, starting from 1. k is the location. k is between 1 and n factorial. You can have a look at this explanation, but we'll dive deeper into this right now. Say n is 3, the numbers we get to pick from are 1, 2, and 3. We've got to arrange them in every possible way. All the possible arrangements are 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 in ascending order. Now in our question, in our sample test case, k was 4. So all we've got to do is return the fourth from the top. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 1 is the fourth permutation, which is why our result will be 2, 3, 1. Now the screen is open, the questions here. Head on to the coding link down below and try solving it for yourselves. Once you're done, get back and see the hint or you can skip straight to the solution. So guys, here let's have a look at a different example, at a larger example, so we get a better picture about the problem. Let's say n was 4 instead of 3. Now we're going to have a lot more permutations. We're going to have 4 factorial, that is 24 permutations. And now we've got k as 9. Once we list out all our permutations, we can see this right here. Is there any pattern we can glean from these permutations? And can we repeatedly apply a certain method in order to get the final answer? So the clue here is that we've got to generate our output digit by digit. Let's first have a look at the first digit. Now all our n factorial combinations have certain similarities. We know n is four. So there are going to be four groups. The first group is going to have the first digit as one. The second group is going to have the first digit as two. The third, the first digit as three. And finally, the first digit is going to be four in the last group. Now using the k value, can we determine what the first digit is? Can we place that k into one of these groups and then figure out how to start off with a solution? And once we do that, can we recursively apply this method in order to generate each and every single digit in order to get our four digit output. Think on that and we'll get back with the solution. Okay guys, now we know K is nine and we've got four groups. Since the total number of permutations is N factorial and the total number of groups is N, each group is going to have N factorial by N elements. In other words, each of these groups is going to have n minus one factorial elements. Here we can see n is four, which is why n factorial is 24 and n minus one factorial is six. So we've got four groups of six elements each. The first group has the first digit as one. The second group's first digit is two. The third group's first digit is three and the final group's first digit is four. Now we see that k is nine. How do we determine which of these groups k falls in? It's simple. We divide it by n minus one factorial, which is six in this case. So once we divide k by six, we get 1.5. We ignore the decimal part. So the integral part, the integer part is one. Since this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. We now know that k lies in the second group, which is why the first digit of our output is going to be two. 
Now let's have a look at the second group. The other groups are not important. We've already figured out what the first digit is. So let's remove that first digit from our solution set because we've already used that digit. Let's remove the first digit from the group as well and have a look at the rest. Let's also assume our top element is zero. So first we're going to subtract one from K because K starts from one. We want K to start from zero. Now, if we assume the topmost element is zero, K is going to be two. And now again, we can see some similarities. There are a total of three groups. That's because our N is three, since it has only three elements. And each of these three groups has N minus one factorial. That's two different elements. So now we've got three groups of two elements. We've got our new K value. What do we do? Repeat the exact same process. Now we know K is two and N minus one factorial is two. So when we do two by two, we get one. So K is in block one, which is why we append three to our answer. And now we just have a look at that particular block. Once we repeat the exact same process two more times, we append one and four to our answer to finally get a result of two, three, one, four. So the gist of the algorithm is to first subtract one from K. K starts from one. We want to ensure K starts from zero instead. Now we divide K with N minus one factorial. The reason being, we want to get what the current digit is. Once we get that value, we're going to append it into our result. And we're going to delete that element from our array. Finally, we modulo N minus one factorial with K in order to ensure that we're looking at the current block. Our zero should now be at the start of our current block instead of the start at our old block. So the final step we do is K equals K modulo N minus one factorial. These steps will continuously get repeated until our answer has been generated. In other words, until our array is empty. Finally, we simply display our result. So first, I've defined a factorial function in order to generate factorial. It's pretty straightforward. While n is greater than or equal to one, we multiply n with p, decrement n, and return p. It's a standard factorial program. We can remove this pass right here. Now, we define the function itself. So first we build an array. We've been given n, say n is four. So we've got to build an array one, two, three, four. That's what this does right here. We've got to subtract one from k in order to ensure it starts from zero instead of one. And our final result is initially an empty string. Now, while our array still has elements in it, first we find what n minus one factorial is. That's the dividend. Following that, we find the number we've got to add into our final string. That's k by n minus one factorial. Now, don't get alarmed by this double division in case you're not familiar with Python. That's just integer division. All you have to do in other languages is typecast or just leave it alone. So if you are using integer variables, it will automatically get typecasted. We add that position to our result and remove that position from our array. Finally, we do k equals k modulo div in order to move our zero from the old block to the new block. Finally, we return our result. Let's see if this works. Sample test case have been passed. Once we press submit, we can see every input has been accepted. So guys, I hope you like the solution. Normally these permutation problems really boggle the mind and the approach we follow instinctively is to generate each and every single possible combination and then arrive at the solution, hone in on the answer. We don't need to do that at all. There's a nice, simple and elegant solution right here. So if you liked it, make sure to hit the golden trio here, guys. Like, subscribe and the bell icon and leave your comments down below. It's been Vivek and we'll see you next time.